Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Rahim. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, this video is exactly going to be on GNU Radio. Uh, as you can see, the GNU Radio flow graph. And this is going to be a quite simple flow graph. Uh, I think the, uh, the reason for this flow graph was in last flow graph, I think, uh, last couple of videos ago, uh, I made a video on uh, different type of modulation schemes, uh, digital modulation schemes. Uh, this is also one of those graphs. But here I'm just using uh, a simple uh, chunks to symbol block to actually do exactly the same thing that I want to do. I want to I want to modulate a signal which is going to be BPSK base. I want to modulate a signal which is going to be QPSK base, and I'm going to modulate something at 16 QAM base signal. So for a uh, closer distance, we're going to use QPSK or BPSK. And for, uh, sorry, for closer distance, we're going to use 16 QAM and, and, and higher modulation schemes as compared to a lower modulation, lower order modulation scheme that is for longer distances. Uh, for lower order modulation schemes, for longer distances. Uh, so the idea is quite nice. So let's basically look at our flow graph. I'm not doing anything funny. I have my random source, which is donating my samples, which is going swinging from 0 to 155. I'm using a pack to unpack. This is a block that allows me to pack four bits at a time. So for example, if you remember it from my last video, in BPSK, we pack two bits. Uh, and then we pack uh, four bits, uh, two bits for QPSK, two bits, uh, sorry, one bit to represent BPSK, two bits to represent QPSK, and then three bits to represent 8PSK, and then, and then so on. So this is just that block. That is going to a block called chunks to symbol. That is mapping into a symbol map. That's all it's doing. I'm taking this source, which is acting as my modulating signal, and I'm using this, and I'm adding a noise source to it. That's all I'm doing. So, so this part of my flow graph that you can see. So basically, I have my random source that is generating me random zeros and ones. And out of those, I'm either picking up one bit, two bit, three bit, four bits, and so on. And this is being converted into a symbol. This is going to an adder block. This adder block is being added with noise, Gaussian noise. Because I want to I show you exactly the same thing what I showed you previously in my flow graph. That what happens when you corrupt your signal, when you bit pattern with noise. Now, if you were to just simply look at this, so this is acting as my digital signal, which is in a form of zeros and ones. Now, all of this is being multiplied together with a sinusoidal or a cosinusoidal wave that is one megahertz of frequency. Both of them, both of them are multiplied together. So if you were to look at the equation, basically what do you do? You take your digital signal, you multiply it with a cold signal or a sinusoidal signal, and you were looking at the output of this in a oscillation diagram and in our time set. Uh, the best place to visualize my signal is in constellation diagram when you have higher order modulation schemes. Okay, now here comes the tricky thing. This is controlled how many bits we're going to pack in one time, one transition time, it's I'm using a block called mod order, which is a variable block. So basically, by having four here, which means I'm packing four bits. By packing four bits, which means I'll have 16 levels because I have a flow graph for 16 QAM. All right. If I'm packing two bits, then two raised to two would give me QPSK, which means I'll have four points on my constellation diagram. Just like similar to a last last uh, flow graph that I've been did, but we were over there we were using constellation modulator. Here we're just using a crude knowledge that when I have my digital signal coming in, I'm, I'm multiplying it by a cosine sort of wave, and to generate what I want to generate. So that's what this mod order is all about. So I am controlling this with a variable. Now, I also have some other variables as well. So let's look at our variable. First, BPSK. Now, if you remember it from complex structure, BPSK either is going to have 0 degrees or 108 degrees. So, if you have seen an IQ structure, you have horizontal axis, which is your in phase, and your vertical axis, which is a quadrature. So, this point is located on my x axis, which is acting as a in phase as negative 1 and 0. 
so it's not moving anywhere on that y-axis which is going to be my quadrature axis this is positive one point on my on my on my on my IQ on my eye level is going to be one but at Q is just going to be zero so that's why this point lies here this is for BPS scale either it's going to be zero or either it's going to be 180 degrees now if you were to look at this QPSK on the other hand QPSK which means my mod order is going to be 2 so 2 raised to 2 I'll have 4 different levels so at 4 different levels 1 point would be lying at negative 1 positive 1 positive 1 negative 1 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 these are 4 points that will be appear on my constellation diagram now if I were to look at my 16 QM that in order for me to get 16 point on my constellation diagram I need to have 16 of these values so these values I've selected as negative 1 minus 1 and so on and and I'll have 16 different values on constellation diagram. I'll explain this more in constellation diagram so this is being called here using a constellation and this so all of these variables I have used a chooser block which I called it constellation diagram and they will call on these blocks, on these variable blocks. All right. So I'm using a chooser block, and I call it a constellation diagram, constellation. And this is being called here. And each of these variables are being called around on these blocks. Let's just quickly look at the flow graph. Let me run this flow graph. Let's press OK, and run this flow graph. Now. So I have a chooser block, which is BPSK, QPSK, QAM. I really don't care about this. This is going to be a modulating signal. Let's make this smaller. So here's my. Now, if you were to look at my flow graph, if I'm choosing a BPSK, this is what I now would expect, isn't it? I'm getting three points. Either you should get zero or you get 180 degrees, the opposite point. The reason I'm getting this is because of this. I haven't changed my mod order yet mod order that I have is 4. So in order for me to generate BPSK, I need to have 1 bit. So when I select this as 1 bit and apply, so 2 raised to 1 would give me 2 points on my constellation diagram. Let me just simply run this flow graph and show you again. Now when I have selected my BPSK, look, I'm getting exactly 2 points. And the location of this point is positive 1, 0, negative one zero all right they're just showing it as a negative sign but this is what it is all right now when i look at my qpsk now qpsk should have four points but i'm not seeing those four points here i'm not seeing them why because i have to change my mod order i have to ex use a chooser block for it but i haven't get time to modify this so let me just choose this to two two raised to two would give me four points now i have everything intact I'm going to apply, I'm going to hit my play button, and I will see those four points which are declared in this variable. So let me just select QPSK and boom. Here, uh, here are my four points, so right here, four points. Negative one, positive one, negative one, negative one, negative one, positive one, negative one, and one, and positive one. Right. So now let me just quickly go here. Let me select QM. I won't see those points either because I need to pack how many bits. This is the best way to understand. You have to pack how many bits. You need to pack four bits because two raised to four give me those sixteen points. So I'm going to change my mod order to four, and I'm going to look at my signal again. So let me just please quickly press this button and let me select QM. Now let's look at our flow graph. Let's zoom in on it. Here we go. Look at my points. Now I have 16 points. Now each of these points definitely have its location. So basically this is, so this point would be what? Minus 3 on I and 3 positive 3 on my Q. This point is going to be minus 2, minus 3 on my I, and it's going to be 1 on my Q, IQ. So if you were to look at it, what I mean to say is quadrature and in phase. 
So this is going to be your in phase. This is going to be your quadrature value. In phase and quadrature. So you're not at zero. You walk towards this point. This point lies somewhere in positive one. Positive one, positive one. This point is positive one on my in phase and positive three on my quadrature. Hence you get constellation diagrams like these. Now, what will happen when I'm using a higher, mod higher modulation scheme? Now, where, where does this noise comes in? As soon as I'm introducing noise into my system, my bits start getting corrupted. Now, if I have a densely populated modulation schemes, what it will do is it will start corrupting a, a, a bits which are closer to each other. Let's look at it. You can see this start corrupting these, these bits. And we don't, we don't want to have that. So that's why we love to use these higher modulation schemes that have a lot of constellation point, just to give you an idea, like this, so these points don't get corrupted. I can, as compared to a point which is further away, in our case, let's look at QPSK, let me change the order to apply, OK. And let me just look at, quickly run this flow graph. And QPSK. Now, when I introduce noise into my system, it's very hard for me to corrupt that. It means I have to have my my channel must should have a lot of noise in order for me to corrupt these bits as compared to my higher modulation schemes, which can easily get corrupted in the presence of noise. So uh, I hope you like this small tutorial. On, uh, on digital modulation schemes. Another approach of understanding digital modulation schemes using GNU Radio. And if you have any questions, leave it in the comment section. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel.